Hello, I'm Kenneth Williams, and I'm going to be giving a presentation which comes from a lightning talk that I gave at BlizzCon 2016. Now, I'm a senior software engineer on the Diablo 3 team, and in particular, I actually focus on servers. Now, to start talking about servers, I wanted to focus on what we do. So Diablo 3 has two pieces. It's got the client, which is the little PC you can see there on the left, and the server, represented by the big server rack. The server runs the game, does a lot of simulation. Also, as server engineers, we help manage features that affect your online experience. We manage parties, we manage chatting online, those kinds of features. So typically, your client, when you log in to Diablo 3, you end up connecting to one of our servers, and then you play on the server. This talk is going to focus on no downtime. So to do that, I wanted to first talk about what downtime is. Downtime. You're probably familiar with this, this nice little breaking news that tells you you can't play. Downtime is when we have to take the servers down for many reasons. Could be some hardware upgrades or to repair some faulty hardware. In the past, it was to push out patches. It could be to update maybe some of the different pieces of software our servers are using. Now, we decided that we wanted to actually get rid of downtime for patching at least. Because when we're doing downtime during patching, people can't play. And not playing leads to sad demons. So we decided to bring out the heroic power of no downtime. We decided as the Diablo 3 team that we were going to work and make it so our servers could actually stay up during our patch times so that players could continue to play rather than having to take a break while we were patching and seeing that unfortunate breaking news. Unfortunately, to do that, there were a lot of challenges. There were a lot of things we were going to have to deal with, problems we were going to have to solve. I'm going to cover a few of those challenges and we'll talk about some of the things that were concerns and some of the ways we solved them. The first major concern is that we had to deal with the fact that we could have some the new version running, you know, the new servers, and we may have the old version. So in order to solve the problem where we needed to have both the old version and the new version, so players could play on the old version while the new version was there, we shifted a system internally we do red-blue. Now, we didn't actually paint our servers red and blue, don't worry, but it's something we use to kind of represent how things are. In this particular example, the old version will be on the red servers, and the new version's on the blue servers. By using multiple servers, we can allow players to keep playing on the red servers, while some players may be playing on the blue servers. Unfortunately, with our game being online, there are a lot of features that kind of cross that server boundaries, features that allow players to be interacting when they may be on the old or new. Features like chat, or one we're going to talk about, parties. So, as you can see here, we've got a couple players in a party together. Diablo 3 allows you to party up and join games together. Now we have Johanna, who's on the red or the old server, and Nazebo, who's on the blue or the new server. Now, unfortunately, if we were to allow these players to play together, we wouldn't know which server to put them on. If we let them play on red, Nazebo may have some new data that doesn't work, that's not compatible. If we let them play on blue, Johanna would have problems as well. So we solve that by simply saying, not today. We say, different versions of Diablo 3 cannot play together. Make sure all players are patched up to the latest version of Diablo 3. This allows us to keep players from ending up on a version that they really shouldn't be playing on at the moment. Fortunately, this is a simple solve. Johanna can just log out of Diablo 3, update her client, and they can be back to slaying demons quickly. Another challenge we had is the existence of dangerous new items. Now, in many patches, we add content, and we almost always add those great new legendaries. This particular image shows some of the different legendaries that you can get and where we show that. You can see here Nazebo, who's on the new version, and in the clan messaging, we can see that he's earned a new legendary, the Barber, which was new in 243, and one of the new 243 achievements. Also, you can link those in chat. We have him linking in chat at the bottom of this slide, and we have an image of the new achievement. In order to solve this, we have to deal with this problem we call backwards compatibility, where we have to make sure when we add new data, 
anytime something on an old version could see that data, it has to be able to ignore the data or at minimum not modify the data. In this particular case, if Johanna looks at Nazebo's page or at her clan, you can see in the clan we see unknown for the Barber legendary and we see unknown for the new achievement as well as in chat we'll see unknown because Johanna's client can't recognize that new data until she updates. The next challenge we had to deal with is we didn't want old servers to see new data. Here's a, a sample of something where we added a new feature when we added Kanaya's cube. The old servers wouldn't have the cube. You can see it grayed out there, but the new servers would. Now, if we allowed players from the new version to play on the old version, we may lose data, such as Kanaya's cube data. We wouldn't want to lose your powers simply because you ended up accidentally or playing on a friend in an old version. So we did several things to protect players from dealing with the problems of going back to old servers. The, one of the things we did, we don't allow you to play in an old version. Once you've patched, say you play at work with the newest version, if you go home to play, you get this message that says the game is out of date. Please patch the game and log back in. So you'll solve that by patching and logging in. Other things is the places, once again, where the data crosses the boundary, we have actually make sure that it's backwards compatible. Here, Johanna's looking at Nazebo's player sheet, and you can see there's no Kanai's cube powers. But when Nazebo looks at his own player sheet, he does see the powers. Since he's on the new version, it's not a problem. In summary, adding no downtime to Diablo 3 was a big endeavor. It took a significant amount of work. However, for Blizzard, the continuity of player experience is very important. It was important to us to make sure you could always play even while we were patching. And it was totally worth it. Thanks to Etnies445, who said the Diablo 3 team has literally revolutionized the patching process for Diablo 3. It's great for us to see from the community this great recognition and their thanks for, for doing something that was a big amount of effort for us, but as mentioned, it was totally worth it. And by Solving the problem of downtime, we were able to make sad demons become happy. Thank you.